Lenapel. Leninger Principles of Biochemistry. Chapter 1 The Foundations of Biochemistry. Part 2 Bacterial and archaeal cells share common features but differ in important ways. Let's start with bacterial cells. These tiny, single celled organisms are known for their diverse shapes and sizes. From spherical to rod shaped, bacteria are incredibly adaptable and can be found in a wide range of environments, from soil to the human body. Now, let's take a look at archaeal cells. Like bacteria, archaea are also single celled microorganisms. However, they are often found in extreme environments such as salt lakes, hot springs, and highly acidic bogs. So, what sets these two apart? Well, one key difference lies in their cell envelopes. While bacterial cells have a single membrane with a thin layer of peptidoglycan, archaeal cells have a single membrane surrounded by an outer layer that includes either a peptidoglycan-like structure or a porous protein shell. This structural difference is crucial in understanding how these microorganisms interact with their environments and adapt to extreme conditions. Now, let's talk about DNA. Both bacterial and archaeal cells contain a single, circular molecule of DNA, which serves as the genetic blueprint for the cell. This DNA contains the instructions for building all the cellular components and provides a template for the production of identical DNA molecules during cell division. Despite their similarities, bacterial and archaeal cells also exhibit genetic diversity. This genetic diversity is a result of the unique evolutionary paths that each group has taken over billions of years. And there you have it. Bacterial and archaeal cells share common features, but their unique characteristics make them distinct in important ways. Eukaryotic cells have a variety of membranous organelles, which can be isolated for study. Eukaryotic cells, such as those found in plants, animals, and fungi, are known for their complex internal organization. They contain a range of membranous organelles, each with specialized functions. Let's start with the nucleus, often referred to as the control center of the cell. It houses the genetic material, DNA, and is involved in regulating essential cellular processes. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. Scientists have developed methods to isolate these organelles from the cell for in-depth study. One such method involves a process called subcellular fractionation. In subcellular fractionation, cells are gently disrupted to release their contents into a solution. The homogenate is then centrifuged, allowing organelles like the nucleus, mitochondria, and lysosomes to be separated based on their size and density. Once isolated, these organelles can be further studied to understand their structures, functions, and the biochemical processes they are involved in. This research is crucial for advancing our knowledge of cell biology, disease mechanisms, and potential therapeutic targets. By studying these organelles, scientists can uncover valuable insights into cellular processes and the underlying causes of various health conditions. The cytoplasm is organized by the cytoskeleton and is highly dynamic cells build supramolecular structures. Let's start by understanding what the cytoplasm is. The cytoplasm is the gel-like substance that fills the interior of the cell, and it plays a crucial role in housing various organelles and facilitating numerous cellular processes. One of the key players in organizing the cytoplasm is the cytoskeleton. Think of the cytoskeleton as the cell's internal scaffolding system. It's made up of different types of protein filaments, including actin filaments, microtubules, and intermediate filaments. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. The cytoskeleton isn't just a static framework, it's highly dynamic and constantly changing. It's like a bustling highway system within the cell, allowing organelles and vesicles to move around, and even facilitating the process of cell division. Within the cytoplasm, cells also build supramolecular structures. These structures are composed of smaller macromolecules and molecular subunits, and they play a vital role in the overall organization and function of the cell. The interactions between the cytoskeleton and organelles are non-covalent, reversible, and subject to regulation in response to various intracellular and extracellular signals. This means that the cell's internal architecture is far from random, it's finely orchestrated and tightly regulated. In vitro studies may overlook important interactions among molecules. First off, what exactly are in vitro studies? Well, in vitro is a Latin term that means in glass, and in the context of biology and biochemistry, it refers to experiments that are conducted outside of a living organism, typically in a test tube or a controlled laboratory setting. 
Now, the important thing to understand about in vitro studies is that they can be incredibly revealing and provide valuable insights into biological processes. However, it's crucial to keep in mind that the inside of a cell is quite different from the inside of a test tube. Why is that? Well, let's break it down. When we study biological processes in vitro, we're essentially looking at isolated molecules or components of a cell in a simplified experimental system. This allows us to focus on specific interactions and mechanisms without the complexity of the entire cellular environment. However, it's important to remember that the cell is a highly organized and dynamic system, where molecules are constantly interacting and influencing each other in ways that may not be fully captured in the controlled environment of a test tube. One of the key factors to consider is the concept of entropy, which refers to the randomness or disorder of the components of a chemical system. Entropy plays a crucial role in biological processes, and it's important to recognize that the inside of a cell is a highly ordered, non-random structure, which is immensely rich in information and thus entropy poor. So, what does this mean for in vitro studies? Well, it means that these studies may not fully capture the intricate interactions and dynamics that occur within a living cell, where molecules are constantly influenced by their surroundings and the presence of other molecules. For example, in the cell, enzymes are dissolved or suspended in the gel-like cytosol with thousands of other proteins, some of which bind to that enzyme and influence its activity. This complex environment can have a significant impact on the function and regulation of individual molecules, which may not be fully replicated in an in vitro setting. In conclusion, while in vitro studies have been remarkably revealing and have provided valuable insights into biological processes, it's important to recognize that they may not fully capture the complex interactions and dynamics that occur within a living cell. Understanding the influences of cellular organization and macromolecular associations on the function of individual enzymes and other biomolecules is a central challenge of biochemistry. So, that's a wrap. We hope you found this video informative and insightful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.